Hey, welcome back guys. This is just a quick follow up on yesterday's GameStop video. I got a ton of questions in the comment section and I figured I'd make a quick video to try and answer all of them. Yesterday's comment section was hilarious. I was going to read out my favorite comment, but it would probably get me banned from YouTube. So you'll just have to look at them yourselves. So let's quickly cover the news of trading halts of the MEM stocks, brokers not allowing people to trade GameStop and other MEM stocks. Who's good and who's bad in this situation? Does the huge short interest mean that there's naked shorting going on in these stocks? Should GameStop be added to the S&P 500? And how do I think this will all end? So first up, the trading halts. Well, the CEO of NASDAQ announced yesterday that she is monitoring social media chatter and will halt trading if the chatter is associated with unusual stock activity. That kind of sounds like chatter to me, as any stock that's moving an awful lot will obviously have people talking about it online. And I don't know how a regulator like that can decide if a move is legitimate or not. NASDAQ is a self-regulatory organization and it's supposed to ensure a fair market but I can't really imagine what software they've quickly banged out for this purpose. I think they just want to make an announcement saying that traders should refrain from any illegal activity and obviously that's a good idea at all times. Now as I said yesterday buying a stock because you think the price will go up is not illegal. You might feel that it'll rise because it's a great company or you might feel that it's just going to go up because someone is unwinding a huge short position. If you're trading on publicly available information, both are probably legitimate approaches. At this point, it's not just the Wall Street Bets boys trading. The story's been all over the news this week and whenever there's blood in the water, like a hedge fund possibly unwinding, the sharks turn up to feed. Traders bet against long-term capital management positions back in 1998. They bet against Lehman in 2007. The lesson really is just that it's best not to get in over your head in markets because people will come after you, especially if you have a very large position. The big difference this time is that not only is someone being squeezed and losing money, but they're also being made fun of on social media. So what about the trading halts? There are many reasons for trading halts, and it's likely that some of the halts over the last few days just relate to the sheer volume of trading activity in the stocks. The price was moving so fast yesterday that it was almost impossible to say what the stock price was at any given point in time. More than 24 billion shares changed hands and 57 million stock options were traded. So it was a big day. It's possible that the Nasdaq had to halt occasionally just due to the sheer volume being traded. So what about the online brokers restricting their customers from trading MEM stocks? The customers are upset, as are politicians like AOC, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump, who are possibly all on the side of the Wall Street Bets boys. I saw that Elizabeth Warren announced that the SEC should wake up. I don't fully understand. I don't know what that means. Pick a side, Elizabeth. Who are you going to subsidize, Wall Street bets or hedge funds? So next up, the brokers curbed trading in stonks, including GameStop, AMC and BlackBerry. And they say they're doing this to protect their customers, which means that they're doing this so that their customers don't do something stupid and then sue them for allowing them to do something stupid. The problem is that if they stop allowing customers to buy certain stocks and those stocks fall because of of this, they will then possibly be sued by the customers who bought the stock right before the brokerage stepped in. I guess either way, this whole situation is probably good for securities lawyers. Apparently, a Robinhood customer has already filed a class action lawsuit against Robinhood in federal court, claiming that Robinhood has completely blocked retail investors from purchasing GameStop for no legitimate reason, and that customers lost out on unlimited attendees. A friend of mine emailed me to point out that the hedge fund Citadel, which is one of the funds bailing out Melvin Capital, is also the high frequency trading firm or market maker that pays Robinhood to route trades to them. And I think the fact that I'm pointing things like this out on YouTube is why Robinhood won't sponsor my videos. 
Other people have asked why the SEC are not investigating naked short selling. First up, I'd have to say dress however you want when you're trading. But naked short selling means selling a stock short without first borrowing it. So I'm being asked how short interest in a stonk can be above 100%. While such high short interest is unusual, it can actually easily happen without there being anything wrong. So let's say I own a stock like GameStop. I can agree to lend it to you and you can then use that stock to short sell and that's fine. Now, when you sell that stock short, the borrowed stock you'll be delivering into the buyer's account. That buyer is then able to lend it out to someone else who might want to borrow the stock because it's just a stock that's been delivered to them. Like it, it hasn't been labeled as anything special. And so they can lend that out to someone else who then shorts it. And thus in that example, one share has been lent out twice and sold short twice. If this happened with the entire float of a given company stock, we could see 200% short interest and nothing illegal has occurred. If something illegal is going on, the SEC will investigate it. They're a pretty hardcore regulator and no one really wants to be investigated by the SEC. Now, some of you would ask, well, why would I lend out my stock? Well, with a stock like GameStop, it's hard to borrow and therefore I would be paid a rate. At the moment, it's around 30% a year to lend that out. So as a short seller, you would need to make a gain of 30% to even break even. And equally, if I just held on to the stock and lent it out, I make 30% even if it does nothing over the next year. That just sort of shows you that shorting hard to borrow stock is kind of like swimming against the tide. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not advisable usually. Apologies, by the way, for always putting you guys in the losing trades in my examples, but you know, I couldn't do it any other way. Now, it's worth noting as well that brokerage firms wouldn't want to allow naked shorting, especially in a situation like this, because they don't want to end up swallowing their customers' losses. And so there's all sorts of compliance people and so on looking out for this. I would imagine that it's generally fine. The next question I've been asked is, should GameStop be added to the S&P 500 like Tesla was? Now, in many ways, I would like that to happen just because I would find it funny, but it probably won't happen because a company does have to have a positive net income in order to be added to the S&P. There are a number of rules around index membership and GameStop does not have positive net income right now. Hopefully, Elon Musk might be able to give them some carbon credits and then they could possibly. So finally, are the Wall Street Bets boys the good people and hedge funds the bad people? Or as CNBC will tell you, are hedge funds good and entitled to all of the attendees? In my opinion, there are no good guys or bad guys in this story. So there's just traders with opposing positions. You can view this as being like a high stakes poker game. Short sellers are not doing anything evil. They're simply trying to make money. If they're wrong and they push the stock price down too low, they end up just providing an opportunity to someone else to invest in a company at a good price. Things like trading options, trading on margin and short selling stocks are all risky strategies and you sign a risk disclosure before you're allowed to do this. The risk disclosure basically says that you're a big boy and that you understand the risk. Now, I feel bad for anyone who loses their money because that's no fun, but that is just a deal you sign up for. In markets, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes you make a smart decision and you still lose. That's just the game. That's the way it is. There's no real morality tale in these stories. There's just winners and losers. In this game, regulators are like referees. They're there to ensure a level playing field and a fair game. Their real purpose is to protect mom and pop investors. And that's why you can't do this type of trading in things like your retirement account. I don't really think that any mom and pop investors are getting harmed here. Regulators might be concerned that markets don't appear to be trading reasonably, but it's not really a government official's job to decide the fair price of a stock. In this situation, someone will win, someone will lose, and that's really it. Now, I've also been asked if GameStop could issue new equity at these high prices. And the answer is that they probably could, but they would also probably get sued by whoever bought that equity if it instantly tanked. 
AMC, the world's largest cinema operator, which is another MEM stock, did issue new stock. They sold 50 million shares yesterday, also selling some bonds. In a side story, AMC rose 300% yesterday, which was above the trigger price on their convertible bonds that were held by Silver Lake Group, a private equity firm. They converted the bonds into stock at a price of 1351, and as of the close yesterday, their position was worth more than 880 million. So it's not just the retail investors who are loving the MEMS. Eventually, all of this is going to end. The MEM stocks will return to something in the range of their reasonable value. The Wall Street bets boys, well, some of them will win, some of them will lose, depending on their entry and exit prices. Some might get to cash in their options with huge gains on expiration. Short sellers also will probably be a bit more careful for the next while about crowded short positions. See you guys later. Bye. 